Now the other side, as you can see, we've got a very prominent septal deviation, right? So we need to, to, to do a septoplasty. Now this is quite a significant deviation and what makes this a little bit more complicated is that it's very anterior. Endoscopic septoplasty is very easy in a posterior deviation, but with an anterior deviation, it can be quite challenging. So first of all, we place an incision just in front of the deviation. Of course, we will infiltrate so that we can elevate the mucoperichondrium. Right? So in a cadaver, the mucoperichondrium is extremely thin. So it can be quite difficult to dissect in a cadaver without tearing. But if you are on the right plane, you will not have any bleeding. Okay? So that is the plane that you want to. And now I'm going to dissect and you can see how significant the septal deviation is. So you want to go all the way to the back, raise the mucoperichondrium, and you can see how easy it is to tear because the deviation is so marked. And at the same time, in a cadaver, the mucoperichondrium is usually extremely thin as well. So what we want to do now, because, and of course, there is no infiltration. We did not infiltrate in this case. So you want to dissect the mucoperichondrium on the opposite side. Can I have a black sleeve, please? Or so make sure that we... There you go. So we have dissected the mucoperichondrium on the opposite side. And dissect the mucoperichondrium here. And with a black sleeve now, you can remove the septal deviation as required. And you can see the deviation is also at the junction of the cartilage and the maxillary crest. And now we are removing the septum. So this is a simple, nicely shown way of doing an endoscopo endoscopic septoplasty for the deviation that is quite anterior, even anterior to the middle turbinate and the inferior turbinate as well. So here we need to remove this and remove the septum as much as required until we are able to achieve our objective, which is to get enough visualization to be able to continue with the surgery. So there you go. So with this now, you can see, please elevator again. There is some amount of maxillary class deviation as well. And so as I said earlier, it can be a little bit more difficult to remove the mucoperichondrium in a cadaver, one, and the other because we do not infiltrate where else in real life we would have infiltrated the cadaver as well. So I'm going to remove dissect so that I can visualize the maxillary crest. And again, you can see that is the maxillary crest coming into view here on both sides. Can I have a Blakesley as well? And now I'm going to remove the maxillary crest and remove only what is required for you to achieve your aim of the surgery. We have to make sure we leave at least a few millimeters of bone anteriorly so that we do not have any columella dislocation. We want to keep a few millimeters of bone superiorly so that we do not have any septal collapse as well. Okay. Face elevator again. Thank you, Dean. Now I'm going to place the septum back like this. So now we have a much nicer view of the whole area.